Hey guys, this is G5 Cosmos here once again. Today I am going to be making this video to talk about a rule set manner. Uh, as some of you may know, I am a TO or tournament organizer uh, in Queens, New York. And uh, this is something that goes way beyond the scale of my own TOing and affects, you know, major tournaments. So for those of you who don't know, uh, there's a rule called DSR, which stands for Dave's Stupid Rule. And uh, there are a variety of variations of the rule, but all of them refer to basically not being able to play on stages that have been played on before. I'm going to be specifically addressing the current uh, modified DSR, which is the most common and uh, least oppressive uh, variation of uh, Dave's stupid rule. And uh, what modified DSR states is that a player cannot counterpick to the last stage that that player won on. So if you won a game on Final Destination, and that was the last game that you won in the set, at some point in the set, if you have a counter pick, you are not allowed to go back to FD because you already won on it. And we're going to talk in this video about why that's stupid, regardless of whether it's a best of three set or a best of five or anything else. And the basic principle that we're going to be getting at is that this rule unfairly punishes the winner of game one, um, or just it, unpun it unfairly punishes a player for winning, uh, in general. So I've made this little text document here and uh, on the top I have the uh, legend I believe they call it. So when you see strike through that means the stage is banned. A stage that's underlined is the stage that is chosen uh, for a game and a stage uh, and a player with the check mark next to their name means when actually something I forgot to add is that when you see a uh, strike through in italics that means um, DSR band stage. Okay, strike three plus italics. Yeah, doing things on the fly here. DSR band stage. Okay, so moving down, we're going to start off with uh, a best of three set. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down to get the view of everything here. Now, for this example, we're going to be looking at the ideal situation. It's very hypothetical, but we're presenting a situation that is going to uh, emulate the intended effect of DSR uh, in the purest way possible and to exemplify why in the purest way possible uh, it is still flawed. So for this example, we're going to assume that player one and player two are around the same skill level. We're going to assume that they play an even matchup and we're going to be looking at a five stage rule set in which uh, the each player's best stages, their two best stages, are their opponent's worst stages, and then their third best stage is equivalent to their third worst stage and equivalent to their opponent's uh, third best stage. So to give you a little idea of what I mean by that, if you didn't understand already, player one's best stage is player two's worst stage, player one's second best stage is player two's second worst stage, and they both share the same third best stage, which is also their third worst stage because there's five stages. Okay. So, we're going to look now for game one. Uh, it's very important. Game one is very important because game one is the neutral game. It's the game where players choose from the starter stages, which are, you know, objectively the most neutral in any rule set. And it's going to provide the fairest outcome possible given the stage list and the rule set present. So, we see uh, in this scenario. They both share the third best stage, and they wind up both striking to that naturally as their uh, other stages are all skewed uh, to one player's favor. Okay, so now we're going to see player one wins this game. So that's basically an even chance of winning it, uh, and this would be technically the hardest game to win uh, without a player having a counterpick advantage because this is on a stage that they strike to rather than getting a counterpick. So player one wins this stage. So going into player two, now player one has one ban. Okay, so this is also, this is I much mentioned, this this hypothetical rule set and stage list that we're working with is a one ban rule set, one ban, five stages, which is actually what we have in Smash 4, but I don't want to be looking at, in terms of games or any actual situations. Like This is just a purely, uh, you know, situational ex example or purely example-based situation, whatever you want to call it. So player one naturally is going to ban player two's best stage, for game two, because he won in game one, so he doesn't want player two 
playing on the best stage. So now player two is of course gonna to go to his second best stage. Now it's important to note here as we're gonna come back to, player two lost one option. Out of all the stages they could have chosen from, they lost one option. Now you only see three stages here because I'm only listing their best, but keep in mind these two stages uh, are also different stages and they're the player two's uh, worst and second worst stages, but player two probably doesn't want to go to one of those. We're also going to assume for this example that the players are remaining their same character for the entire set, although uh, that can provide other complications with DSR when people do change characters, but none of it makes DSR, it actually makes it worse in some ways. Um, so yeah, player two is going to counterpick to their second best stage, and they are going to win game two, which makes sense because this was their counterpick, so they had an advantage naturally as you're supposed to when you have a counterpick. Okay, so now here's where DSR rears its ugly head. So moving into game three, now player two won the last game. So player two is naturally going to ban player one's best stage. But DSR is also going to ban player one's third best stage because that's the stage the player one won on in game one. Now you might be thinking, okay, well that's not that bad because player one still gets to go to his second best stage, which is uh, the equivalent of player two's second best stage. It's not the same stage, but in other words, it's the equivalent advantage for that player going to their second best stage. And player two just did that in game two. So the SR doesn't really hurt player one. Well, in this example, that's technically true, but it still hurts him because if you take a look carefully, um, player one loses two options. He loses his best stage and his third best stage. It doesn't really matter which two options he loses. The simple fact is player one is losing two stages uh, when it's time for him to counterpick, whereas player two only lost one. What makes this even more unfair is that player one, uh, player one and player two up to game three, they each won one game. Player 1's game was much harder to win because it was on a stage that was the most neutral for the both players, whereas Player 2 had the opportunity to counterpick, and he got to go to a better stage. You know, he had a counterpick, uh, he had more stages to choose from, so he has a natural advantage there. That's the whole point of a counterpick. So it was definitely, uh, it, it objectively, as just far as statistics go, easier for Player 2 to win Game 2 than it was for Player 1 to win Game 1. Yet, Player 1 is the one who winds up with fewer choices and an inherent disadvantage uh, compared to the counterpick of player two in game two uh, when he does his counterpick in game three. So this is basically the way that it affects a best of three and this is naturally going to happen any time a set goes to game three with DSR. If a set is a 2-0 it never happens because uh, the player who won is never the one on the counterpicking end. But as you can see anytime it goes to game three player one is going to lose a choice and for no reason, there's really no reason uh, like for this to happen. And it is punishing him for winning, which is just really what we don't want in a competitive situation. Uh, he should have, without DSR, um, player one would be able to go to, he would basically, player one would only lose one option, which is what player two lost in game two. So there's no reason for that to be any different. Um, player one earned the advantage of having counterpick advantage in game three by winning game one where they were on neutral playing field. So there's no reason for him to be limited in game three. Okay, so I think this is pretty clear. I'm going to show some examples of best of fives. In best of fives, there are two ways that this can essentially work out if it goes to a game five situation. Um, both of which are basically just expanding on the same concept, but they can be a little different. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Uh, we're going to scroll down. Uh, now, let's say that in this example that player one uh, does go ahead and win um, game three, like so. Okay, so now player one won this game, so now he gets to ban for game four. So this is when DSR now starts affecting player two. So player one bans player two's best stage. DSR bans player two's second best stage. So now player two is in the same boat essentially as player one was in game three because now player two has another counter pick, but because they won a game earlier, now they're losing an option of a stage, which was the one that they won on, as you can see here. Okay, and you might think, oh, well, that evens things up again. But it actually doesn't because the player who won the first game, which was player one, is still going to be always have that disadvantage of DSR removing one of their choices first. They're always going to have that before the other player, and that matters a lot. So as we see, we go into game one, excuse me, game five, player two does win game four on their third best stage. 
And now going into game five, player two is still going to obviously ban player one's best stage. DSR uh, is still banning player two's, player one's second best stage um, because, or shouldn't that be the other way around? Let's see. Player one, yeah, because, no, oh, I didn't put a choice for this. Well, I didn't make this example too good, did I? Uh, in this game, player one lost this, and he went to his second best stage. So that's what I forgot to do, is underline this. So yes, the example is still fine. Player one loses his second best stage, because that's the last stage that he won on. Now, if, it, if this was the original DSR, which bans every stage that you've won on previously, which is absurd in a best of five, um, then he would also lose his third best stage. So he wouldn't have, he would lose his three best stages when the opponent only has one ban which is absolutely absurd, but I'm pretty sure most tournaments now use modified DSR, which is slightly less absurd, uh, and it makes the player allowed to still go to his third best stage, but basically now he's eating this disadvantage uh, again, and it's going to be harder for him to win this, and it doesn't really matter who wins this game because the DSR has already reared its ugly head. Okay, so now I'm going to show you one more example, and we're going to go to... Uh, this scenario where we have a best of five, but it starts off with a 2-0. So I'm just gonna walk you through it slowly. And this one, DSR, is not as annoying, but it still does the same thing of removing options from the player who had the wins. So it's still unfair, it's just, it just happens to be less effective based on this specific example. So same everything uh, in game one, uh, except that, uh, well, yeah, same everything in game one. They both go to the third best stage, which is their shared mutual third best stage, and player one wins. Uh, in the next game, uh, player one obviously bans player two's best stage, so player two counterpicks to his second best stage. Well, in this scenario, player one makes the upset, and he wins on the counterpick, so now he gets to have his ban again. Obviously, he bans the best stage. Some rule sets uh, don't even allow you to change your ban, but for this example, it doesn't matter whether you change it or not. He's always banning the best stage of player two. Um, so now in game three, uh, player two again loses his best stage to player one's ban, and again counterpicks to his second best stage, which is the natural thing. Even though he lost on it last game, it's still his second best stage. It, it does make sense for him to go to it, and this time around, he's actually going to win. So now when game four comes around, uh, and player two gets uh, to ban, he bans player one's best stage, and player one is going to lose player two's second best stage, which is his second worst stage, because that's the last stage that player one won on. Uh, again, keep in mind, if this was regular DSR, he would also lose his third best stage, um, so that would be taking away more. Now, obviously this doesn't matter as much, because it's unlikely that player two will go to his second worst stage, but you never really know. I mean, he did win uh, on game two, I think it was, in that on that stage. Yes. Um, but... That's not the point. The point is not like, oh, he doesn't want to go to the stage, what have you. The point is that he's losing an option. Now, player one is the one who's won more games here. He's been the one who's winning, and yet his counterpick is weaker than his opponent's counterpick was uh, the last two games that his opponent was able to counterpick. So um, anyway, in this example, player one does go to his second best stage. Player two this time makes the upset sort of like player one did earlier and wins on the counterpick. And now going into game five, uh, player one bans player two's best stage is basically the, the reverse of game four and player two loses um the best stage from the ban as well as the second worst stage which is player two player one's second best stage uh due to dsr and it affects them in the same way but again it affected the winning player first and that's the just the general concept of why uh, the rule set is unfair and uh, the only like i've heard arguments as to like taking away uh you know like variety of stages and whatnot but I mean if you have a rule set that has more variety of stages you can have more bans anyway and if the stage that DSR would ban seems like a good stage for uh, the player uh, on the counter picking end to go to then the player with the bans is probably just going to ban that stage or they'll be able to um, and you know although we do want stage variety, variety to be present uh, at some point, it reaches a point where you can't uh, sacrifice the fairness of a, of a real counterpick uh, and the true counterpick advantage just to achieve that result. It's not really uh, worth it. And one other thing I'm going to mention, which um, 
I don't have citation of this, so this could be false. But I have also heard that DSR originated in very early melee days when game one stages were chosen at random, uh, making the rule set just completely like not you know up, just outdated compared to the way our rule set is now. Uh, I'm not sure about that though, so I'm not going to use that as legitimate um, you know evidence or you know just to to help my argument here, but. Yeah, so I think going forward into Smash Ultimate, we should say goodbye to DSR. In my region of New York City, none of our tournaments use it anyway, and pretty much everyone is happy with that. We have uh, our tournaments run fine, and especially in uh, the current Smash 4 rule set, just to get a little more perspective, when we have Dreamland and Battlefield counting as one stage and DSR on, that really limits the stages. I agree with the DSR, or excuse me, with the um, Battlefield Dreamland grouping, uh, although that is another argument, but only with DSR off because having it on and those two stages separated or limit, uh, you know, counting as the same band, it's just extra limiting. So what do you guys think? Do you guys like DSR? Do you hate DSR? You can let me know down in the comments below. Um, if this video somehow gains some traction, maybe we can help, you know, start a movement to not let this stupid rule, as it is actually called, make its way into the next game. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and if you want more videos, well, probably not too many like this, but just Smash videos in general, especially moving on to Ultimate, you can give this channel a subscribe, and I would appreciate that, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.